Hi folks, my name is Andy Skinner. I am the creator of the Ramp Chart Pattern Recognition Program at Nebadon.com. You may not have heard of the Ramp Program, but it is about 20 years old. It's been used extensively by stock and forex traders over the years. It's designed for, to scan for many different chart patterns. If I click right here, you can see a list. There are over 50 patterns here. I'm not going to stay with the website. I want to demonstrate the program and how it relates to cryptocurrencies. About a year ago, I got very interested in cryptocurrencies, and I'm a small investor. And I wanted to adapt the 20 years of work I've done in the RAMP program to cryptocurrencies, because actually they're the same charts. And so all the same technology applies. The real problem was finding the data. Once that was accomplished, everything got really simple for me. I'm going to bring up, bring up the RAMP program now, and we'll scan some cryptos. Real quickly, I'll just show you the few, first few steps that you would want to do. Step number one is select a data source. And for our use, we want to select cryptocurrencies. And be sure you select cryptocurrencies, because if you ask it to scan cryptos and don't put in a cryptocurrency database, you will receive nothing in your scans. Now we'll select a symbol list, that's step two. And there are several default symbol lists in here. This one is not default. I happen to have an Exodus wallet, and I put the currencies that are available through Exodus in it for this demonstration. I'll click on use this list. Now I have my symbols loaded, my data, say, uh, data source chosen. I want to look at candlesticks. And uh, in step number four, I'll select a scan. For this demonstration to start with, I'm just going to use what I have named Bob charts. You probably never heard of them, but Bob charts are simply automatic support and resistance lines. And we'll talk a little bit about them. So I'll ch select Bob charts. This should give me a chart for every cryptocurrency symbol or name. I'll click start scan and just let this thing go and let it start making charts. Now you notice the little pause between the charts. That's normally not there, but I have not run this for a while, so the program needs to bring down thousands of records for each symbol or crypto name, and that takes a while. Now, just to, so you get used to the idea of the time involved, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna run the exact same scan again. This time, all the records have been brought down in advance, and all the data is stored on my computer, and it's running locally. So the scans are very fast. The time consumed is downloading data. Now, there's something here on OMG that I can show you right off the bat. If you look at this line at the bottom, where I've connected this low to this low, these are all done automatically, by the way. I did not hand draw these. They're done on the fly by the program. That is a traditional support line. Every trend line, you be it resistance or support, has an opposite side of a theoretical channel. If you take the point that's furthest away from this red line, which would be right here, that's the furthest point away, and draw a parallel line through it, you get a hypothetical channel that was set up by this red line. I have never found a name for it, and I sort of had to invent it. It's called a reaction line in Bob charts. So we have trend lines and we have reaction lines. And I can promise you this, a reaction line will turn a stock or a symbol just like a trend line will. You really want to be able to see them. In my setup, I've asked it to show me the closest three support and closest three resistance line. So it says number of trend lines to show. I set it at three, and so I see three resistance lines and three support lines. I've asked it to go back 2,500 bars. Swinger pivot size, that is basically how big of a swing do you want this thing to recognize? I can set it up to 10, and I'll set the number of lines down to one, and we'll redo the scan. You have a lot of control here. Now, I'll tap through them. Because I set it to a very large swing size, only the largest turns are being recognized, and you're finding the larger channels. 
you notice Bitcoin doesn't even have an upper end because it's broken out. And at this point, it has no resistance at all. I'm just going to tab through these very quickly. There's a nice triangle set up on Ethereum. That actually is a very good way to find triangles. It's just to run the Bob charts and they, they become really obvious. I love this chart, Golem. If you can't figure out where support is on Golem, then you really need to go back and study your charts. I actually bought a little bit of Golem back here the other day when it was on this red line. I didn't buy much because I'm a, I don't, don't know a lot about Golem, but I like the chart, so I just took advantage of it. Let me go back. I'm going to turn on some more lines. I personally like three. I like to see three lines. And... I'll put a middle of the road, uh, well, three. That's just my favorite settings. Another thing I can do, I can zoom out so it shows all the historical bars. I don't particularly like this, but I put it in the program so you can see it and understand what's going on. Bitcoin is a really good example here. You notice that there were years that I'm not very interested in. The only thing I care about is where these lines are over here on the right-hand side. What I would really like for this thing to do is automatically zoom to the pertinent trend lines. And to do that, all I have to do is say zoom to see significant trend lines. And when I hit start scan, it will rescan and regenerate all the charts and they will be zoomed in so I can see the, what's going on in the last few months, which is really all I'm interested in. By the way, these are automatically zoomed. If one of the major trend lines was still effective from years ago, it would be zoomed out and show the entire thing. That's one of the most important things about the RAMP program. You don't have to play with the zoom. It looks at the entire history and automatically zooms to the most pertinent information. Let's look at a couple of these uh, symbols. that you, you may have noticed some of them look a little weird. I'm going to look at uh, this one right here. Bit. Bitcoin gold. You notice I put Bitcoin in here as the symbol. I put a tile mark and I type gold afterwards. It's right here in my, in my input symbols. When I click on it, that tile mark tells me I'm not interested in Bitcoin in terms of dollars. I want to know what it is worth in ounces of gold. And so over on the left-hand side, you'll see that the y-axis now measures Bitcoin in ounces of gold. And you can see the last one Bitcoin was worth 5.6 ounces of gold. You can also do this for other cryptocurrencies. Here's Bitcoin with Litecoin as a vertical axis. And you can see that as of right now, one Bitcoin is worth 111.479 Litecoins. I find this to be really useful. You can also do it with other currencies. I don't have one in here right now, so we'll go back and do one. I'll show you how that's done. Select a symbol list. I'll go into Exodus. I'll do Litecoin, and I'll put the tile mark. And then I will type in a dollar sign, dollar sign. That tells me this is a currency, and I'll put AUD for Australian dollar. I'll hit Use This List. Now I'll go back, and I'll run my run my scan again. I could do an individual symbol, but it's so fast, I just do them all. And here's my Litecoin, Australian dollars. Litecoin is worth 84 Australian dollars. Okay, and uh, Litecoin is, here's Litecoin silver. It's worth 3.76 ounces of silver. And by default, this is US dollars. Litecoin is at 65.4 US dollars. So far, I've only showed you what Bob charts do. These are the automatic support and resistance lines. This is my favorite thing to do with the program, but there are other things I like to do too, and I think I'll save that for other videos. I want to get into what other scans are available. I can click here on select a scan. A lot of people use uh, some of these scans extensively. Here's an index scanner. You can do uh, CCI, RSI, MACD, divergences, really powerful divergence scanners in here. There, there would be your setup, a lot of control over what you're looking for. I particularly like this one for the cryptocurrencies. This is a price consolidation scanner. This one will pick out breakouts from consolidations. 
to use this scanner, I'll close it right now and show you how I would do that. And select a symbol list. I might have a list of my favorite symbols, or I would go to Crypto All. Okay, if I select Crypto All and use this list, there are 1,277 symbols. And that number is updated every day as they're added. If you run Bob charts on all 1,277, I would guess you might only get about half of them that would generate a chart. And it's important to understand the reason why. Ramp looks at the historical data, and if there are less than, a, than 50 bars of data, it won't make the chart. So the cryptocurrency or token has to be 50 to 60 trading days old with history before it makes any sense to pattern recognition on it. So if you don't see your cryptocurrency there, don't be concerned. It may have been just released and it will pop into this window. You don't have to automatically add it. Another thing I want to caution you about, the names of these symbols are actually the currency names. I'm in crypto all. And when, you, when you're in this window, if you click on download a standard symbol currency list, it will go out to the internet and it will bring down the latest list so you get everything up to today that's available for historical data. I want to go down and look at Golem. Here's a good example of where you can get in trouble. It's a long way to Golem. I always just call it Golem, but its real name is Golem Network Tokens without the dashes. Uh, you can put the dashes in or you can leave them out the historical data call actually uses dashes. And if you leave them out, it'll still work because the ramp program will fill the dashes in wherever there are spaces. But be careful about this. Most of them are the same. Some of them have special names and you do have to use its formal name. You can get that formal name from this list, the crypto all list. So if you have one you like and it's not showing up, there are two possible reasons. Number one, you didn't put the name in correctly. It's not the formal name where the historical data is. Number two, it hasn't been trading long enough. A good example of this is SALT. I like SALT and it's in my portfolio. Now let's see if it's showing up yet. I doubt that it is. Select my uh, Exodus portfolio, use this list, and you'll notice that there's SALT right there. Select a scan. I'll do Bob charts and have it generate the images. And I should see salt right at the bottom. And I don't. It's disappointing to me because I like salt. I want to see the chart, but there's simply not enough data yet. There should be in a few days, any day now, it'll pop up and start working because there will be enough data to generate these charts. I think that's a good introduction. There's a lot more I'd like to do. I want to go in and do some of the more sophisticated scans, find some consolidation and breakouts, but I'm going to save that for other videos because I don't want to make these videos too long. Anyway, that's an introduction to the RAMP program. There is a free trial. You can run it 10 times for free on real data. Just go to nebadon.com and click on the free trial and you'll be running RAMP 9 Lite which is this exact program. I encourage you to do that. If you have any questions, just email me, andy at nebadon.com, and I'll get an answer right back to you. Thank you.